Hi, this lecture is about cavus foot or what we call high arched foot. The objectives of this lecture is we're going to discuss what is the etiology of the cavus foot and then we're going to speak about the pathology, clinical presentation and imaging in cases of cavus foot and then we're going to speak about the outlines for treatment strategies for cavus foot. A good source that you can use is this book uh, written by myself, Dr. Naga and Dr. Abdul. This is actually the second edition of the book uh, that was also very successful. So let's talk about the pathology of the uh, cavus foot. As we said, cavus foot is high arched foot, which basically it means it is the opposite of the flat foot. So if you see these pictures here of different positions of the foot, uh, this is the cavus. Cavus foot, as we're going to see uh, lots of example after that, is the patient who has a high arched foot. Uh, and as we said, it is basically uh, the uh, reverse of the uh, flat foot in which there is loss of the arch. Uh, cavus foot, especially the cases of the obvious cavus foot, are usually due to neurological affection of the foot. Um, sometimes that neurological affection is very uh, minimal and the cavus foot is the uh, first and sometimes the only manifestation of the disease. Uh, some of the neurological cases of, cave, of cavus foot may be charcot marie tooth and charcot marie tooth is actually uh, the most common cause of cavus in the developed world. Uh, spina bifida sacral level, so if you have a sacral level affection, sometimes the, um, that will cause cavus foot. Uh, sometimes intrathecal pathology uh, like adastiatomelia or cord liboma or tether cord. Um, will cause cavus foot and in these cases if the affection is minor the cavus foot will be the only uh, manifestation of the disease uh, some affection of poliomyelitis also will cause, will cause cavus foot so let's talk now about the pathology how cavus foot uh, starts and how it starts now after that progression so that normally our foot rests on three pillars what are these three pillars it is the first ray the heel and the fifth ray. These three pillars, um, the foot rests on it, and we call it the tripod theory. So the tripod theory means that the foot rests on three pillars, the heel, the first head of the first metatarsal, and the head of the fifth metatarsal. In cases of cavus foot, the tibialis anterior muscle is weaker than the peroneus longus muscle. So what will happen? The first ray, the first metatarsal, will start to plantar flex because the peroneus longus is a plantar flexor of the first ray, while the tibialis anterior is dorsiflexor. Peroneus longus is relatively uh, stronger than the tibialis anterior in case of cavus foot. That will cause plantar flexion of the first ray. So as we see here, the, the first ray now is plantarly flexed, means it is pointing down more. So that will cause the foot now is resting on this pillar. Uh, so in order for you to put the three pillars uh, uh, into the uh, foot, you will have to turn that part here inward, which causes varus. So again, the, fir the first thing that happens with cavus foot is your first ray start to plant a flexion uh, due to imbalance between your peroneus longus, which be st um, uh, relatively stronger than the tibialis anterior. Uh, so your, your tripod theory is disturbed now. You have the first ray. So in order to bring the, the two pillars down, you will do varus. So you will do varus um, of the foot. Uh, which basically will bring the two other pillars on the floor. So in order for uh, the, the foot to be resting on three pillars, um, uh, and after plantar flexion of the first ray, a varus will happen, so you can bring again the three pillars onto the floor. Um, and uh, this will convert any cavus foot basically into cavo varus. Uh, so um, the cavus, uh, cases of cavus uh, foot, uh, will be um, uh, turning into cable varus because uh, that uh, varus component to bring the uh, three pillars into the floor. Uh, the clinical presentation, as we said, the first thing, the foot will have high arch, as you can see here, this is a case of high arch. You can see here, this is a bilateral uh, uh, case of cavus foot. Patient has a very high arch on both of them. Uh, and and then, uh, as we said, you have to do a very thorough neurological exam. You can even send the patient to a neurologist um, uh, for uh, assessment. 
and then you'd like to assess the uh, varus component. You want to see uh, does this patient uh, varus is reversible or not, uh, meaning that um, uh, uh, as we said, any cavus foot will become cavovarus, and if this cavovarus becomes um, uh, there for a long time, that varus component becomes integral part of the deformity and not reversible. So in order for you to assess if the cavus uh, uh, the part, um, I'm sorry, if the varus part is uh, reversible or not, we use the Coleman test. Uh, the Coleman block test, you put a, a, a block here on the outer side of the foot. And when you put it on the outer side of the foot, uh, now you have the fifth ray onto the uh, stable, onto a platform, uh, so the cause of the virus is not needed now. If you find that if this virus has reversed, this indicates that this virus is reversible. So you can see here this patient has a virus. When we lifted the fifth uh, um, metatarsal on the uh, Coleman block test, uh, that virus was corrected, indicating that this is a case of reversible virus. So it means that patient is mainly having cavus, the virus part to bring the three uh, elements of the foot on the floor is still reversible. And if we corrected uh, the plantar flexion of the first ray, we can correct the whole foot. Um, you can see here another example. This patient has a very high R shear, uh, and you can see that R shear in that uh, uh, picture. So what is the radiographs in, case, case, in cases of cavus foot? Normally, if you draw a line over the talus and a line over the first metatarsal, they should be in line together uh, or a very small angle in between them. However, in cases of cavus, there will be an angle between the, this line here in the, in the talus and the angle between and this line here in the first metatarsal. And this angle is called Mary's angle or uh, lateral uh, talar first metatarsal angle. So this angle here in the lateral view between the talus and the first metatarsal called Mary's angle, these lines should be in line together. If the angle between them is more than five degree uh, with the apex um, uh, uh, dorsally, uh, that means that this um, patient has a cavus element. So again, a line over the talus, a line over the first metatarsal, these patient, uh, these lines should be in line together or very small angle. If you have uh, an angle with apex dorsally, that means cavus foot. Uh, you can see here another example, more obvious. Here is a line over the first metatarsal. Here is the line over the talus. So this is called uh, the lateral talar first metatarsal angle. It's actually 36 degree. It should be uh, 0 to 5. This is 36 degree indicating severe cavus deformity. Um, here we can see another example. Um, here again, uh, severe uh, uh, cavus. You can see how much angle this and how much arch this patient has. And here is his angle. You can see it here in the uh, x-ray. So this is called the Mary's angle. If this is more than five, that indicate cavus foot. So what is the treatment outline for this condition? First, you have to identify the cause. So if this patient is a well-known neurological case, uh, you already know the, uh, the reason of his cavus. Like for example, a patient with a known charcoal mary tooth coming with cavus foot, uh, you know that this is the reason. However, if the patient is not uh, known to have any neurological disease and he's presenting with a, a severe cavus, this indicates that there is an underlying neurological cause. Um, you may think of referring this patient to neurology or neurosurgery or obtaining MRI of the lumbar spine. Um, now we would like to focus on the cavus part. Um, in the early part, we use bracing, and there is a very specific type of bracing. We're going to uh, discuss that in the uh, next slide. Uh, and however, most of the cases of cavus foot is a progressive, especially in pediatric patients with underlying neurological disease. Most of the cases are progressive, so they will uh, need um, some sort of surgical intervention, as we're going to uh, show in the next slide. Uh, these may be tender release or transfer, it may be plantar fascia, or um, in uh, most of the cases we do um, uh, osteotomy of the first uh, cuneiform uh, to correct the plantar flexion.
Important thing to understand about the braces for Kiva's foot, as we said, there is various components, so the, actually it is lateral heel wedge. So it's not the common medial arch support that we use with the flat feet. This is actually a lateral heel wedge, so it's put on the lateral side uh, of the heel to raise the uh, lateral part and correct the Kiva's component. A very important um, aspect also, it has, it has to have nothing underneath the first metatarsal because as we know, the first metatarsal is plantar flexed or pointing down. So when you raise the lateral part, this actually first part will be more, more pushing down or more plantar flexed. So if you put anything underneath it, it will cause pain. So the cava's foot is a very specific brace. It's a lateral heel wedge to raise the lateral part and correct the various component. And in the same time, it should have, it should have nothing underneath uh, the first metatarsal head so that it allows uh, the first metatarsal head to uh, be plantar flexed without causing any pressure. Um, uh, here we're going to see a case that uh, needed surgery. As we said, most of the cases are progressive and at the point of time they will need surgery. This is a case of severe cavus here. You can see the Mary's angle. Here is the first metatarsal. Uh, I'm sorry, here is the talus. Here is the first metatarsal. A big angle in between them indicating severe cavus. You can see clinically here how much is uh, this amount of um, high arch, uh, it, the various component. Uh, is um, corrected. You can see here with the Coleman test, as we said, this is pointing out. So the various component is uh, flexible. Um, so the disease is still in the beginning. Um, so uh, for this patient, surgery was done in the form of release of his plantar fascia. Um, uh, uh, we did um, osteotomy of the first uh, cuneiform uh, to dorsiflex and uh, correction of the first um, uh, uh, first two um, clawing was done uh, and uh, we used some muscle transfer to correct the plantar flexion and you can see here see this is the x-ray that we saw before for pre-op you can see how much the plant the first ray is plantar flexed you can see here post-op uh, um, four weeks after surgery uh, the first metatarsal and the talus are more or less parallel together um, in most of the cases of cava's foot, the various component is fixed, and in these cases, you will have to add a calcaneal osteotomy, as you can see here. So we did in this case calcaneal osteotomy. We did first metatarsal osteotomy, and the same procedure was done to correct the first ray plantar flexion. So you can see preoperative. This is the angle of the first metatarsal and the talus, uh, and post-op they became uh, aligned together and parallel. Um, so without going into the details of the surgical treatment, uh, most cases will need uh, plantar fascia release. They may um, need um, first metatarsal uh, or fir first cuneiform osteotomy. Uh, they may need calcaneal osteotomy. Uh, they may need muscle transfer. Uh, all these are surgical options. Uh, and um, again, most of the cases are progressive, especially uh, uh, the cases that are due to neurological disease, and most of them will need surgery. Uh, however, you can start in the beginning with bracing, as we said, and the bracing is lateral heel wedge with uh, nothing under the first metatarsal head. Uh, thank you. All my videos are for educational purpose only. Please consult your doctor before any decision. Thank you.